one was with regards to the expression of a factor which was thyroid transcription factor 1 so patient had the presence of a lung mass and then he was having the presence of an ihc marker which had the positivity for ttf1 thyroid transcription factor 1 now we had a discussion when you are talking about the number one cancer that we have globally as well as in our country that is adenocarcinoma a is the first alphabet and therefore easy for most of you to recall that ttf is going to be expressed in patients who are going to be having adenocarcinoma of the lung the second question was talking about a patient who was having a respiratory distress. He was diagnosed to be a case of adult respiratory distress syndrome. Now, a slight variation. One group of people said that the initial or the starting event was asked in the exam, which is usually endothelial cell injury. And a lot of students actually recalled the fact the question was asking about the roles that is being played by cytokines. So endothelial cell injury is responsible for release of cytokines like interleukin-8, TNF-alpha. And they are the ones which are responsible for causing activation of the neutrophils. These neutrophils are subsequently going to cause more damage. There is going to be a deposition of the fibrin layer. And that's what is going to be responsible for the classical fibrin membrane that we have in such patients. Yeah. We also got a question which talked about a patient who was having a history of dyspnea. Or it made a mention of respiratory distress. And the patient was having a liver dysfunction. So combination of pulmonary manifestation, combination along with hepatic manifestation, the likely defect in the patient is going to be. So options were with respect to ATP7B, that means it was associated with Wilson's ATP7A, which was main case. And one option was alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, right? Alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Okay, you said this was a question, so we can I can always highlight it. Then there was a question in the second session, which was talking about an industry worker. Now, it specifically did not make a mention of what kind of industry was he working in. But he was working in industry for a long duration of time, something like 20 years or so. And there was an image which was given. A lot of people said it was a classical image of a interstitial fibrosis having the presence of an asbestos body. So perhaps if you can let me know if there was a specific, uh, you know, uh, fact with regards to the asbestos body or did they make a mention of the fact insulation industry or something of that sort, which could have given you a hint regarding asbestosis. I mean, why I'm talking about that is because berylios is something that you would see in association with the uh, uh, patient who's going to be working in the aerospace industry. But if you are not being given something which is going to be associated, right? Brian brown color ke deposits say, okay. So I can perhaps just take a cue from some of you. Brown deposits is what I can say over here, okay. So brown deposits can actually be seen because of iron as well. So perhaps it can be because of ferruginous body. If, if, if uh, you know, having was not there, okay. Sheesh kebab appearance was there, okay. Wonderful, wonderful. So we understand the fact asbestos body, ferruginous body, sheesh kebab appearance. That's what is going to be seen in a patient who's going to be suffering from asbestosis only. Right? Okay. So this patient had panacinar emphysema. Was it mentioned actually? If, you, if it was, then of course, then panacinar emphysema is, can be having, you know, one prominent cause that we have talked about. That is alpha-1 antitrypsin. Brown color ka body tha kuch kuch, violent shape. Sheesh ka appearance tha, okay. Anthracosis. Anthracosis was the last option. Okay. Thank you so much for that purpose. Of course, we are going to be coming with a... Better detailed discussion, but I think uh, pretty much the time so that we can just have a quick look over here. 